Hello, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this edition of the Cancer Coach Talks. I'm your host, Leslie Nance. And tonight, I'm going to be telling a little story about my journey over the past seven weeks. What happened to me when I found a lump or a mass in my breast about the size of a quarter. It was about, it was about that big um, in my right breast. Um, so I'm going to share that story with you today. And we're also going to discuss um, the difference between mammography and ultrasound, breast MRIs, and what are some other methods that you can use for individual screening. So I'm super excited to share this information with you. So thank you guys so much for joining in tonight. Um, it's always great to be here live with you and to and to share um, the information that I have gathered over my years of my own personal journey and then through hours, literally massive amount of hours of education, educating myself um, for um, being able to come here and speak with you guys um, uh, with, with confidence and knowledge of how we should be treating our body based on the information that we give it and based on what is right for us as an individual. And we're going to talk a lot about that tonight, about how to be treated as an individual in the medical system. And then also in the wellness system too. I think that it's very important to have that discussion. So thank you guys so much for joining. My name is Leslie Nance. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist, certified holistic cancer coach. Um, I help people one-on-one -on -one through their cancer journeys, really helping them to um, uh, thrive through uh, treatments to heal their body, mind, and soul, their spiritual being, their emotional being, and their physical body, really aligning all of that for healing. So thank you guys for joining me live tonight. If you have not already, please share out um, on however you do that. Share out on Facebook, um, share out to your friends, tag people, whatever you feel compelled to do. If you're watching this in replay, um, thank you so much for doing that. Um, you may be watching on YouTube. You may be watching here on Facebook. Uh, you could be watching from our website, wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much for that. So I have a lot of information to cover tonight. So we're going to dig deep and go right into that. So again, thank you so much for joining. This broadcast is usually about a half hour long. Sometimes we get a little bit longer in there, but you're always welcome to type in your questions, say hello, tell us where you're visiting in from. We love all of that. So please make sure to do that. Um, all right. So I see Anne Marie is here. Hi, Anne Marie. It's good to have you. Thank you so much for joining. Hopefully my sound is okay tonight. So you guys can let me know that surely, but surely um, if I move my microphone over, I'm pretty sure that that will help even more. <laughs> I was in a frenzy. I was in a frenzy <laughs> trying to gather some good information for you guys tonight. So, <laughs> um, so I guess, okay, here it is. Here it is. The big, like, better go check it out and make sure that you're live. Check. This is what we have to do every week, right? <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you, Roger, for letting me know. All right. Roger says I'm fine. I'm fine. Moving on. So, <laughs> Um, so I just tell you a quick story about what's been going on in my life. Many of you have read like the mon thank you so much, Amory, for letting me know. Um, some of you read the monster post that I put out uh, this week talking about a journey that I have been on for the past seven weeks. And so I was a little bit quiet about what was happening in my life because I had a lot going on and I truly wanted to make sure that I had all the information before I shared it with you guys. Um, in the event that heaven forbid, I had cancer in my breast again. So I'm a seven year breast cancer survivor. And so I wanted to make sure I had all the information together before I shared with you. And I would have shared with you good, bad or ugly of what happened to me. But about seven weeks ago, um, I was getting ready uh, <laughs> I was getting ready uh, to go out with my husband. We were going out on a date. We love to go dancing. We like uh, rock and roll music. We love like the Stones and the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. And, you know, so we love, uh, we, we like some modern music as well, but we love classic rock. And one of our favorite bands was playing. So I was getting dressed to go um, on, to go out on a date with Robin. And um, some of you guys have met Robin here. And um, I was getting dressed and 
I had just gotten out of the shower and I bent over to, I think I was putting some lotion on my legs or something. And I bent over. And when I did my, my right arm brushed over the top of my right breast and I felt a lump um, and it felt significant. And it was not there just a few days before because I had, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very obsessed, not obsessed. That's not a right word. I am. I'm very diligent about making sure that I know what's normal for my breast. And as I approach 50, that is changing because I'm going through menopause and I, things are changing in my body. And so um, I'm not going through menopause, but I'm premenopausal at this point, or maybe not, but it's kind of hard to determine like that slow, long process that you go through. But my body is definitely changing as I approach 50. And so, but I felt this, this pretty large mass. It was about the size of a quarter. It was about the size of this uh, beautiful piece of lapis lazuli. <laughs> this is lapis, actually. It was about this size, and that looks huge in the camera, but it was, you can see between my fingers there, you can kind of judge. I'll hold it back over here so it doesn't look like this, which looks huge. Uh, and so it was about that big. Um, and it was at the top of my breast, right here at the very top of my breast, my nipple, and then right here. And I freaked out because I'm a cancer survivor, and I know that there is a some sort of risk. It wasn't there just a couple of days ago. So, or before that. So I thought automatically, okay, this is probably a cyst that has uh, filled with fluid, which happens in the breast and is very normal and is actually very benign. And, you know, and so, and, and that's what's happened. Um, and so I, but it still scared me. I still had a, like a, and I let Robin feel of it. And he's like, yeah, there's something there. Definitely something there. We just need to, we'll get you a doctor's appointment. We'll go have it checked out. I, you know, doesn't feel like the cancer felt, but you know, let's go have it checked out. So, um, so we went on with our date. I actually had a great time that night. Um, I did not sleep well that night. I was very restless. I had so much, um, I had so much, uh, stress sweat that I had to, wash my sheets the next morning because it was smelly and it had a lot of odor in it. And it, that's not like me. My sweat never smells like this. And so there was a lot of stress sweat. So I was pretty stressed. I knew I was pretty high strung about it. So Sunday came and went. Um, I made an appointment online with my doctor for Monday. This was on a Saturday that I found it. And then on Monday, um, I was in my doctor's office that afternoon. And, um, and she did a, an exam, a clinical exam uh, of feeling the breast. And she's like, absolutely, there is something there. And um, she said, and it's a little concerning. And she said, I'd like for you to do a diagnostic mammogram. And I said, I will do that. I, I have not consented to a mammogram in years. I said, I will do that, but I don't want to do it until after I have my period, which was about a week away at that point. And I said, I don't want to do it till after my period is over because I have a feeling that this will change when I when I actually have my period. I know for you guys, you're like, blah, blah, blah. but you never know who's what woman in your life that this story can help. And so. Um, so I, the day that my period started, I was being very vigilant about feeling the size, if it had changed or moved or anything like that. And, um, sure enough, it went away completely. Couldn't feel a thing. Totally felt like normal breast tissue. So I contacted my doctor again and she said, well, if that's the case, um, then you, if you know, then I want you to, um, then I, it, and I told her, I said, I don't want to do a diagnostic mammogram if there's nothing there. And she said, I, you know, okay, but I need to verify that. So I had to go back to see her. So I went back to see her and she was like, sure enough. Yes, there's nothing there. You're completely right. And um, she said, so, but I'd still like for you to do a mammogram and an ultrasound. I said, well, I'm not doing a mammogram first of all. And I'll, we'll talk about that in just a second, why I don't. And so um, I, but I will, I, it, I will move my ultrasound up by a few months because usually I get them in December, the end of November, 1st of December. I'll move it up a couple of months and have that done. And she said, well, OK, that's fine. She And she told me, she said, I will order the ultrasound, but you are going to have a um, you are going to have a hard time getting them to just do the ultrasound. I said, well, whatever, you know, that's that's what I'm going to shoot for. And so, excuse me, my nose is going to run. I promise I won't wipe my nose on camera you may be able to see me anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, 
Um, so I, I know I'm telling the story super fast because I have a lot of stuff to cover with you guys. So you have to listen quickly. Um, so fast forward to uh, breast ultrasound day, which was just last week. It was last uh, week from today. Actually, oh no, a week from Thursday, a week from this Thursday. Um, I went to have my breast ultrasound and um, I walk in and um, I'm, I'm signing in and everything and uh, they come and get me from the back and you can read this whole story in detail online, but they came and get me from the back and a woman walks out and she has the lovely pink gown underneath her arm and my chart and everything. And, and she's like, um, okay, so um, which side mammogram are we doing? And I said, I'm not doing a mammogram. <laughs> and she's like, well, we have here that I was like, I don't care what you have. That's not what I'm doing. So she takes me into the room where the big mammogram boob squisher, <clears throat> boob squisher is. And she sits me down and she's like, I'll have to get the doctor to get her. Okay. For you not to have your mammogram. I was like, well, I don't need her. Okay. I'm not doing a mammogram. <laughs> and so I was nice, but you know, firm, I was firm, but nice. And so she went out the doctor came back with three other technicians and they surrounded me. I'm sitting by the big robot boob squisher and, and they surround me and they're like, and she's like, so I need to discuss with you the risk of being, having breast cancer and not having a mammogram. And I said, well, before you do that, I need to discuss with you my own personal experience with a mammogram and why I'm not having one. And she said, okay, well, what's that? And I said, well, I know that I have very incredibly, probably the densest you have ever seen breast tissue. And that mammogram, even if it's a 3D machine, is not going to see anything. You're not going to be able to detect anything in my breast. And I said, and I know this because when I had cancer, they could not see my tumor in my mammogram, although you could feel it just fine. And it was very close to the skin. It's not like it was even deep tissue. They saw nothing. And they almost sent me home saying that I was fine. And so I am not... I'm not going to put myself through the radiation. This breast has already had a ton of radiation to it. I'm not going to put myself through the pain of it. I'm not going to put myself through the stress of the false positives that you could possibly come up with. And you're not going to be able to see diddly squat. And she says, blah, 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 blah. You know, these are the risk. And if you were my sister, aunt, mother, daughter, whatever, I would feel really concerned about you not having a mammogram. So this is where cancer boss steps up and says, I understand the risk. I'm happy to sign something saying that I denied having a mammogram and I would just like to do the ultrasound. And if that's something that you can't do, then I will have to go and find a facility that can. And she said, no, I will be happy to do, we'll do the ultrasound. We'll do it right now. And, um, and she's like, but you understand the risk. And I was like, and she's like, and I'm going to have, she says this, I'm going to have to note your chart that you're saying no to the mammogram. Like I was a bad girl or something. I was like, okay. <laughs> so she was actually very kind. I was very kind with her. She left out of the room. She just knows what she knows. And I know what I know. And so I know my body very, very well. So cancer boss number one says, this is not what we're doing. So she leaves out. Uh, we go to do the uh, ultrasound. Ultrasound goes fine. Um, and, and we're done with the ultrasound. And literally, as soon as the tech walks out about three, she goes and gets my husband. And by the time Robin comes into the room, the doctor's back, there's like three minutes the, she, I barely had time to say hi to Robin and tell him what everything that was going on. And the, the doctor was back in the room and she's like, um, she's like, well, you're, you're incredibly right. You have the most dense breast tissue I have ever seen. And she said, and you're right. I, we would not have been to we would not have been able to see anything worthwhile in the mammogram because your breast tissue is so dense. And she said, that's why your oncologist, that's why your previous treating physicians were like, don't even bother because you can't see anything. And so 
ding dong. Thank you very much. You know, thank God I stood up for myself. And she's like, so your, your ultrasound looks great. You have a few cysts in your right breast. We saw the one that had inflated, had filled with liquid and then has shrunk again. We've seen it, but it's, there's absolutely no danger anywhere. Your breast tissue looks great overall. There's nothing to be concerned about. And thank you. And so then I just get a letter in the mail today um, I'll fold out my personal information here, but I just get a, uh, <laughs> I just get a letter today saying, you know, uh, we are pleased to inform you that your recent breast imaging is normal, normal. Yay. <laughs> so long story short, I was really being the boss of my, um, I, of, of the situation knowing what was typical for my body, knowing what was right and that what I wanted done. And so, and being able to say it and articulate why made all the difference in the world. I know you guys have a lot of questions. I promise I will get to them, but I do want to cover this material um, in detail tonight. So uh, I, there's always a lot of, so a lot of questions you guys shared that post had like a hundred and almost 180 likes and it had like 36 shares and it had like over 120 comments on it. I mean, you guys were on top of that post about me being a cancer boss and telling my whole story about that event. And one of the blessings of that, even as scary as it was finding a mass in my breast again, um, one of the blessings of that is that it really put me in touch with that process again. It had been, it's been seven years since I've been through that process and cause everything always comes back normal. And so it really put me in touch with that process again and being able to truly tell that story from a perspective of really taking control of a situation. So that was really a blessing for me, honestly, as a cancer coach um, and helping people through the process. So tonight I want to talk from that story has stemmed a lot of questions about mammogram versus breast ultrasound versus MRI. And let me just tell you that anything I'm going to say to you tonight is not medical advice. I am not advising you. I am not telling you what you should do. I am only here to educate you so that you can make a smart decision about what is right for you. Clear? This is not medical advice. Bottom line. Okay. I'm here to tell you what I know and what I have researched about these different methods. And we're going to talk a little bit about alternative methods as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is mammograms. And I found something very interesting and I want to see if I can find it. Hold on just a second. A brief history um, of mammograms. Isn't this fancy? Have I gotten like all fancy up in here? <laughs> I've gotten all fancy on you guys. Um, so this comes from the Kesser, Chris Kesser, um, which is a, uh, a medic. He calls himself a medical detective and he has the Kesser Health Institute and they do a lot of research and they dig deep. Like this is, I get a lot of research from them because I know that they've done their due diligence about, um, about these things, about these, um, uh, subjects. And so in this writing, he gives a brief history and I will share a link to the entire article that you guys can go and read for yourselves, but a brief history of mammograms. Um, and I, I think the thing that I really want to point out here, um, is that last paragraph that says, despite the massive increase. So basically what he's saying here is that in the 1980s, mammography became, um, very popular as a way to detect early breast cancer um, or breast cancer at all in, a, in patients. And so it used to be that you uh, that you did self-examinations, you had clinical uh, um, examinations and mammography was only used for people at high risk. Um, and so but basically what this is <laughs> basically what this is saying is that it is um, that that 
nothing has really changed. And so, and it says, and I think this is really important, despite the massive increase in use of mammography, there is substantial body of research indicating that the widespread over -enthousi enthusiastic practice of mammography over the past few de decades has little to no effect on breast cancer mortality rates. In fact, the research indicates that mammography screenings may do more harm than good and mammography has demonstrated a number of adverse effects, including breast cancer overdiagnosis, unnecessary breast cancer treatments, undue psychological stress, excessive radiation exposure, um, a serious risk of tumor rupture and spread of cancerous cells. All of this is completely true. Now then, if you're wondering if I'm anti-mammography, not necessarily. <laughs> I think that there is a time and place for mammography um, in our um, in 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 our society and the practice, especially you know, we're talking about lowest common denominator here: people that are not paying attention to their health, people that are not being diligent about taking care of themselves or paying attention to their bodies at all. And so I find that true, especially for women that are afraid to do self-examinations. So many women are afraid to touch their own breast. This shocks me. This shocks me because <laughs> We, you need to know what normal breast tissue, I'm touching mine on camera. So you shouldn't be too afraid to do it in private. You need to know what normal tissue feels like for you. What normal breast tissue feels like. My breasts are very dense. They get around my period. They can be lumpy dumpy. They can feel very tight. They don't hurt, but they feel very tight and they can, I can have more lumps than I normally would have. But I know this. I know what is normal and what isn't. I feel in my underarms, you know, I'm very diligent about knowing what that is, is being, being a cancer boss or being a boss of your health is truly understanding what is going on in your body. And so self-examination is still the gold standard, in my opinion. So lowest common denominator, you don't do that, then mammography may be a good choice for you right? Sometimes mammography is good at t deep tissue, but a lot of times they're using mammography and they're, sh they're saying, oh, you have calcifications, you have a stage zero cancer. And so therefore we need to go and remove those calcifications when indeed those calcifications may never turn into anything. And you've been, you've had the word cancer embedded in your mind. You have something that may or may not turn into cancer at some point, and, and that freaks me out. So for that, I'm not super excited about it. Um, if you have non-dense breast tissue, then mammography is great. It, it, it will show 90, I think the re, I think it is, hold on, I have a statistic for this. Um, I think, let me see if this is the one. It may not be the one. No, that's the alternative. Where is it? Whoops. <laughs> hold on. I didn't know you could do two pages at a time. Let me see this one. Is it this one? No, that's not it either. Oops. I'm still learning this process, so please forgive me. There's one that talks about um, the percentages, and I it's so tiny I can't see it. So is this it? No, that's the alternative. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so, but... Essentially, what it's saying is if you have low density breasts, that it and it gives you a 98% visual. In other words, you can see 98% of the breast tissue and its health. If you have dense breast and especially very dense breast, it lowers that visual down 48%. So less than half they can see what's going on in the breast. And so now it's being recommended if you have incredibly dense breasts that you do a mammogram and then you do an ultrasound on top of that. Now I choose not to have that extra radiation because I just know 
I just know what's coming. <laughs> They're going to be like, we can't see anything. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so let's just skip to the ultrasound. And my point with my doctor was, if you see something suspicious in my breast, then we can do a breast MRI and see what what's what. So the next step of that, so a lot of you will ask me, well, so I shouldn't do mammogram and I should do ultrasound. Should I just do ultrasound only? That's what is right for me. I don't know what is right for you. That is up to you through trial and error and discussions with your doctor to figure out what is right for you. So for me, it's the right decision. For you, it may not be the right decision. The problem with ultrasound is that there's still a human error effect because you have a technician. They're called uh, an ultrasonist, I think. Um, they that technician is is it's there's a there can be a lot of human error because they are using a wand over the breast. There is no radiation exposure. It's completely non-invasive, um, but they're using a wand and using measuring sound waves um, through the breast to get an image, to create an image um, to see what's going on in the breast tissue. Um, this is really great for dense breast. In the, in the mammography, they would have never even been able to see the cyst that I have in my breast. Um, with this tool, they can totally see that. But the, there's a human margin of error that you have to consider when you're considering these types of tests. So ultrasound is great for super dense breast. Um, it's when I was first to have breast cancer, they couldn't see the breast cancer. So they moved me to, well, they were going to send me home. And I was like, what else can we do? Because there's something there. And they sent me to the ultrasound, which led to a biopsy, uh, which led to, uh, yes, you have breast cancer. And so it's, so everybody's path is a little bit different and it's, this is up to you to make that decision of what is right for you. But being able to be vocal about that is really important. So if you're consistently having mammograms and they're following it up with an ultrasound because they're not seeing, or they're saying you have very dense breast tissue, then maybe it's time to consider to ditch the mammogram and just go for the ultrasound. If they see something suspicious, go to the breast MRI. That is all completely up to you, of course. Now, a breast MRI is um, is edging that is also uh, uh, non-invasive and is something that you can, you know, that gives a really good picture for de dense breast. It does not see early stage calcifications. If that's something that you're concerned about or you have a history of that, the breast ultrasound will not. It's only looking for tumors. It's only looking for solid mass tumors, um, which is really good at detecting, um, especially tumors under a centimeter, which ultrasound is has a hard time seeing. Um, but depending on your breast tissue, you may be able to feel it or how well you know your breast. So all things to consider for sure. Um, there are a lot of alternative screenings um, for women. If you if you want choices, that's the screen. Oh, yes, I did it. I did it. Great. I did it right this time. So there's all sorts of clinical choice, uh, uh, alternative choices that you can think of to uh, if you don't want to do any of those things. So I have women who just do thermography, which is infrared technology, which is really good at detecting inflammation in the breast, which can be out of balance hormones, um, which can be breast density issues, which can be the cancer of tumors. I mean, it can be a lot of things. Um, there are a lot of false positives with thermography. So something to consider. And if you show something that is a concern, they are still going to want you to have a diagnostic mammogram, which is a mammogram with an ultrasound or a breast MRI um, to determine what the problem is, because it can't tell you what it can, and it's not even good at locating it where it is in the breast. They can give you a general idea, but not like a, like a, a definite idea of even where it is in the breast. So thermography is a great screening tool. I use thermography personally once a year um, for different parts of my body, breast every year, um, head to waist every other year um, to make sure that everything is sailing along really well and that I don't have any concerns in my body. So it's a great tool. Um, digital mammography, which is really not any different than regular mammography, except for the image is different and can be more 
more definite. So a lot of the 3D mammographies are the digital mammographies. Um, clinical breast exams and self breast exams, knowing how to actually do a breast exam not guessing, but learning how to do a self breast exam is really important that you pay attention to that. And then of course, below this, what you don't see, and I can't scroll down, but what you don't see is they talk about ultrasound. Now there is a, um, there is a new type of ultra, whoops, ultrasound out there um, called, I can't remember exactly. Hold on. I have the, I thought I had the piece of paper here. I don't, it's called a, something, something guided ultrasound, automated guided ultrasound. I think it is. I'm not completely sure about that. Um, but it is a, it's a machine that it's actually, it really takes out human error. And that's actually what my doctor was recommending for me the next time I, next year, when I get scanned, she's like, it'd be really good if you could find one of those because the human error aspect kind of leaves that process. And so that is something that is an alternative as well. Nothing on this planet replaces knowing your body. If you find a mass in your breast, do not ignore it. Go have it checked out. If you find a mass anywhere in your groin, in your underarm, in your neck, in your temple, uh, in your scalp, um, anywhere, in your back, you know, anywhere like that, go have it checked out. Worst case scenario, it's cancer. Best case scenario that if it's cancer, you caught it early and you didn't let it get out of control. I talk to so many women that will tell me I felt a mass in my breast like seven months ago and it took me forever to go check, have it checked out. And then I was stage four or I was an advanced stage or you know, I, if I would have went when I first felt it, I probably could have had a lumpectomy. Instead, I had to have a mastectomy. Do not mess around. When you find something, if you find something, go check it out. It's incredibly scary for me to find something in my breast and, and have to go check it out. I don't like it any more than you do, but I know, see, even Penny agrees, but I know that if I do my due diligence and I follow my path, that I, I'm, I'm going to get the answers that I need for my health. I know that. I know from experience. I know from working with thousands of people who have cancer that it's important as soon as you know something is wrong to figure out what that thing is and go have it fixed. Go see what is going on. So... That's my story tonight. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully it answered a few questions for you. I must've said something that sounded like Siri because my Siri is like going crazy. It's like dialoguing everything I just said, which is hilarious. Um, but you know, it, it, hopefully you found some valuable information. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm not a clinician. I'm not a doctor. So I don't want to go like really deep into these subjects. I will share the link here. In fact, let me go grab it right now. I will go, I will share the link here um, that of what I read from you tonight so that you can go check it out. That's, this is where I was getting um, all of that information from that I was reading you. I think it's a really great read if you're debating, if you're more holistically minded and you're debating mammograms or not, this is a really great read that may help answer some of those questions for you. So I'm going to read a couple of questions over here. Maybe I've already answered them. Maybe I haven't. If you have more questions, please type them in now. I'm going to take a few questions and then I'm going to scat out of here. Thank you guys so much for being here with me tonight and hanging out with me. I love it when you're here. Sorry, I have been absent or I was absent last Tuesday. Um, if you don't know, Robin and I are actually moving. And so that process begins um, next Sunday. And so next Tuesday night, um, unless I'm just showing you around my new house or something <laughs> in Texas, I'm moving from Colorado to Texas. Um, and so, um, I probably will not be here next Tuesday night, but keep an eye peeled, um, on the any stage, uh, Facebook page, uh, to see if I am or not. So let's go, uh, let's go answer some questions. And if you guys have more questions, please type those in. Um, all right. So 
Uh, Rose has a lot of questions here. Let me get uh, let me get to those. At what age should a woman start getting mammograms? Um, you know, the, the American Cancer Institute, they start at 40 um, every year um, t- in your 40s um, all the way until you are. I think it's 72. I don't know where they came up with that number. And then when you're in your 70s every other year and then they're saying when you get closer to 80 that you don't need mammograms at all. I will tell you, I have a lot of clients that are in their 60s and 70s that have cancer. And so I don't, I think that that's being a little conservative personally. It's, the most important thing is to truly understand your own body, is to truly be in touch with and mindful about your own health. And that is probably going to answer your question better than even I can or what the standards are um, here in this country. It's different in every country, by the way. Um, Everybody has their own. My cancer, um, if I was in the Netherlands and I had my cancer that I had in 2012, they would have put me on a six-month surveillance and had imaging done every three months, um, so three times essentially, first imaging, middle imaging, and six-month imaging to see what was happening with the tumor. Um, because I was an early stage, aggressive cancer, but early stage to see what it was doing. Is it, am I in harm's way? You know, is it developing quickly? I mean, so there, so they would put me under surveillance. They wouldn't have even done anything for six months. I didn't do anything for almost three months about it because I was, I was confused about what I wanted to do. And so I took some time to think about it myself. So every country's different about how they treat these things. Uh, what's the difference between a mammogram and ultrasound? I think we covered that. Um, so why against mammograms? Not against mammograms at all, um, against overtreatment. That's what I'm against. I'm against doctors thinking that they know your body better than you do. Um, that's what I'm against. I I am fully against being treated as a number or a statistic and, and not being treated as an individual. That That is, I don't have many pet peeves about the medical community. That is one of my biggest. And I understand why they do it. They have to have guidelines and standards because doctors can't and not not everybody is a good patient advocate for themselves because they operate out of fear as opposed to operating out of mindfulness and understanding their body. And so they have to go to lowest common denominator. And that's why I say they know what they know. I know what I know. And we need to meet somewhere in the middle. Um, and so not being a total bitch about it, just to the doctor, just helping them understand why I'm choosing this over that. I think that that's really important. Um, let's see. Uh, so it's about dense breasts versus not so dense breasts. When mammograms are concerned, that is part of the discussion. Um, medically speaking, they will still say even with dense breasts that you need a mammogram. I would question that honestly. Um, but yes, it is. That is the big debate in the medical community. Again, it's more about knowing your body. So, Thank you, Amory. <laughs> I love it. Amory's like, you are truly a cancer boss. I love it. Love it. Yes, for sure. That's I I walk, I walk the walk, I talk the talk, and I walk the walk. 100 percent If I if you are in coaching with me, I am only sharing things with you that I know work and that I would only be willing to do myself, right? Yeah. Love it. Love it. Sherry saying, um, had a, my mammogram last Saturday, all negative. I always check my own breast. Absolutely. Being your own health advocate, being mindful about your health is number one. That is the first line of defense right there. Love it, Sherry. Congratulations, by the way. Yes. Self palpitate your body. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. Um, 35 if family history. Yeah, that and, and women are getting diagnosed earlier and earlier, um, younger and younger. I, that's what I should say, younger and younger. Um, so they, um, it's, it's, it's important. Um, I'm on the verge of oversharing here. So, um, or saying something that is pretty controversial, 
But I truly believe that there is something in our environment that is causing our DNA to be disruptive in such a way. And this is why it's so important that we are incredibly vigilant about our health. And I'm not talking about extreme diets here. I'm not talking about going crazy town with some extreme extreme. I'm talking about living a balanced life, body, mind, and soul, physical body, emotional body, spiritually body, aligning those things to promote health. That in my opinion is the best prevention of all. The best way to cure cancer is to never get it in the first place, which sounds pretty haughty, but I've had cancer. So I wasn't doing my work to help prevent it either. Lowering your chances, lowering your risk, um, are, it's so important. And so I'm seeing women come to me younger and younger and younger. When I was diagnosed at 42, that was incredibly young. They were like, wow, you are so young. But now I'm I'm working with women in their 30s, early 30s that have had children that are have low risk, no family history with very aggressive breast cancers. So, you know, I, I truly believe that there's something environmentally, um, both physical, emotional, and spiritual environment that is causing a disconnection in our DNA that is causing this disruption. And so it's like a war almost in the fact that we have to be vigilant all the time of, of our health. And a lot of people are like, that's a lot of work. Well, so is having cancer. <laughs> Ask any of my cancer bosses here. So nothing is more difficult than having cancer. So yeah, it's a lot of work, but you know, what's the payoff there? So yes. Um, I love it. Yeah. So that's something that we did not talk about tonight, the BRCA gene and hereditary instances, um, all these hereditary tests that they do, these BRCA tests. I mean, all these different, Anne-Marie is a two-time cancer survivor. Um, and so she knows a thing or two about this. So yes. So she's, she's super vigilant about, um, in this case, not only protecting herself, but protecting her family as well. So yeah, of the, of the chances, I don't know what you're saying hundred percent to, but hundred percent Emory. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I told you we had a lot to cover and we did. Um, so next week we'll see if I am here or not. We, I'm not sure, um, if, if, uh, if I will be, it's a, slim possibility. I will be in Texas for sure. Um, but yeah, this could actually be one of our last broadcasts in this little office. And so maybe next time you see me, um, I will be in my new office in my new house in Texas. So um, you guys have a great evening. If you have any questions for me, please reach out. If you're interested in cancer coaching, the first line of that is to go to this, um, this amazing training that is totally free. Um, and here's the link, uh, bit.ly forward slash cancer boss. This is a, um, this is an absolutely free training. You're welcome. Um, this is an absolutely free training. It happens at the top of every hour. Um, and it's something that you can attend for free. It's about 45 minutes uh, long. So if it's something that you want to do, hop in at the top of any hour, um, and you can listen to this free training or register at the top of any hour. And within a few minutes, the, it will start. So come in like three minutes till the hour register, you know, get the link and everything to join in on the training. Um, but here's the link to do that. Um, this training is about truly, um, truly evolving in the five steps that my clients know um, to keep their body inhospitable to cancer and to disease. So, but if you are struggling through treatments, if you are struggling through, um, if you're struggling through a diagnosis, if you're newly diagnosed, if you have any stage, that's why the name of the business is any stage, any stage of cancer, any of that. I am a one-on-one -on -one coach and I help people through these processes to stay healthy and to stay vibrant despite what's going on in your body, that it is possible. And before we leave out tonight, thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Thank you guys for your good wishes about our move. We're super excited. So um, before I leave out tonight, I just want to make sure that you know one thing and one thing, if you take nothing else away from this message tonight, take this away. Hashtag cancer is not 
your destiny. I know it to be true. You guys have a great evening and I will see you when I see you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>